What a game. What a time. What a time. Let me know when the link is tweeted. Or is anybody in the comments already? Are they already oh, yeah. Here? Oh, okay. All right. All right. Well, let's get it started then. Let's get it started because the reality is what a game. What a game. I'm feeling good. Grace is feeling great. I'm Grayson, feeling a little bit more than good. Grayson is reporting to us live from the hot tub. And that's from not the, the hot, hot tub. tub. Y'all see it? That's not the hot tub that they wish for in the Allstate commercial. But boy, this can is. Can I get a hot tub? Can he get a hot tub? Can he get a Wolfpack win? Can we get a, a goal line stop? Can we get a 97 yard drive? Yes, on all counts, baby. And here's the thing, right? Anybody who knows me knows that Grayson and I have admitted every time that we've been wrong on this podcast, every time that we've said something that our, our predictions did not come true or like they did not pan out or whatever the case may be, we've owned that every single time. Every single time. But now we're going to do a little bit of victory lapping because we were told by multiple folks, we were told by many people actually, oh, this team may not win another game. This team is in so much heat. And what did Grayson and I tell y'all after the Duke game? Every game after this is winnable. Every game after this is losable. Every single one. Every single one. This wasn't a situation where – where I felt like nor Grayson felt like, hey, we're we're cooked, we're done as a team. This season is so over. And it's not because we are delusional. It's not because we are are, you know, hey, wolf pack by a hundred guys. We we are guys who look at this thing and we're gonna tell you what it is, what it ain't, what it could be, and what it can't. And look at this thing. Look at this thing. Look at what this team has done. Of the five games from that Duke game that were remaining, if I told you on that day, or if I even told you tonight, rank the five teams that we had left after Duke, what would your ranking look like? Most people, it would be UNC at number one. It would be uh, either Miami or Clemson at two and three, however you want to put it. And then you'd have probably have Virginia Tech at four, Wake Forest at five. And now look, we have beat two of the teams that are in the upper – upper echelon of that group we don't tell you these things because it is just you know a, a terrible oh we want to we want to be homers and, and everything that Doran does is perfect everything that Keys does is perfect everything Westmore does is perfect we're not going to tell you that we're going to tell you this defense stood on its head all night long all night long and we Grayson and I told you if you give Tyler Van Dyke enough time and enough leash, he will piss down his leg. He will throw the ball right to you. He'll find your defender. He'll say, hey, buddy, here's a gift. Here's a gift. I'll give it to you. The reality is this defense carried the night. However, however, I would be remiss if I didn't talk about the timely offense. I would be remiss if I didn't talk about there were so many people that were so worried. And I was at the game in real time. Now, here's a fun fact about me that many of y'all may not know. I rarely ever attend any sporting events as a spectator. I, it's just not really my thing, not really something I'm super into. I enjoy watching games from the comfort of my home but and watching the All-22 and all that afterwards. But in going to this game, there were many people that when we were, when we were backed up at our own two-yard line, oh, my God, I know Doris going to just run it three times and punt it. Just don't give us a safety and we'll be all right. And now look what happened. I'm, I'm trying to tell you, this team is doing special things. Keep giving this team your support. Keep giving this team your love. Keep giving this team your energy. Because I don't care what anybody says. We're going bowling with three games left. We're going bowling with three games where we'll probably be favoring in at least one to two. We're going bowling. Now let's go get one of the good things. Let's go. And, I, and I'm going to tell you, there's something in the distance that I, I don't want to talk about yet, but there's something in the distance that if a couple of things fall the right way, who knows? Who knows? I, I'm just saying, Grayson, I'm going to toss it over to you. Yeah. Southern NC family here for those of y'all that are just now joining the stream. I'm coming to you. I was just in the hot tub, had to get a quick dip in after what a monumental win this was for both Dave Dorn and the NC State football program. Of course, congratulations to Dave Dorn, all-time program wins leader here for NC State, 78. Regardless of how you feel, how you felt the entire season and years in the past, that's a fantastic accomplishment. I think it's well-deserved. I think it, you know it speaks to the program culture, all the guys that have bought in 
over the years, and including this year, pulling out a an excellent win tonight against Miami, the only team that Dave had not beaten up until this point from the ACC. Yeah. So that's a little bit of poetic justice in itself. But w- yes, I mean, what a a gutty, gritty, ugly win. And we will take every single one of those, all 78 of them. We will take them all. And so, Absolutely. yeah, I mean, congratulations to Coach Dorn. Getting into the game here, you just hear the hot tub is turned on suddenly in the background. Um, I mentioned Dave Dorn. I mentioned wins, and the hot tub turns on. That might be a sign I got to get back in. Anyway, the game <laughs> itself here, we we have talked, especially these last couple weeks, the Clemson win just as early as last week. How many more times can you put all of your faith into the defense to just go out there and win you a ball game? Because the offense has struggled. Saw some more of those struggles tonight. We had said basically re- we've reached the point in the season the offense is what it is. The offensive line yeah. is what it is. The wide receiving core, it is what it is. And it's up to Robert and I. It's up to the coaching staff. It's up to the players that are still running on on, on the field, getting out there to get creative and sort of mask the issues to be able to still be effective. And again, it, we provided just enough to win another ball game. I have to shout out Jordan Poole. The first time he touches the ball as an offensive player is a touchdown. A former linebacker didn't get a whole lot of run, converts suddenly to running back. He had a big block last week in the Clemson game to free up KC for a long run, scores a touchdown in this game. And that is the kind of creativity I'm talking about. You take a player that isn't giving you anything, perhaps on defense defensive side of the ball for good reason. He's got a lot of guys in front of him. But to turn him into a running back when that is something that needed attention and you turn that into points in such a big game here against Miami, that is excellent work. That's excellent, excellent work. But, you know, I guess I'll touch more on the offense here before we switch over and talk about what a magnificent job the defense did tonight. Well, well, hold on, hold on, hold on. Can we talk about the fact that we're going bowling? Can we talk about that? Because there were doubts. There were suspicions. There were clouds. There were, oh, I don't know. I don't know if we can get to six. And here's a fun fact about NC State getting the bowl eligibility at this point in the season. At this very moment, as we are recording this, and I believe that we were the last ACC game of the night. Am I correct there, Grayson? Should be, should be, yeah. Okay, so there are only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven current, seven teams that are currently bowl eligible in the ACC. Of those seven teams, Only six have three conference wins. This is not something to be taken lightly. This is not something to look at and say, hey, we we need to uh, honestly look at most of the negatives and look at the things that plagued us at a high level here. That's just not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at this thing. I'm not going to be very happy on this show. It's a fantastic one. What just happened? Hold on. We lost Kenton for a moment. Hey, apologies. Apologies. Right. I'm back. But like I said, I'm not looking at this thing from a standpoint of like, hey, this team, um, you know, this team is, is a disappointment, a letdown, whatever the case may be. At the end of the day, we are six and three with three regular season games remaining. And, and what was my prediction for this team before the season? Nine and I four. believe you had us at eight and four, or nine and three. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Listen, we are not. I I tell you when we're wrong. I tell you when we're way off base. This is a time. This is a moment in Wolfpack history where for all of the flaws of Dave Dorn, for all of the flaws of the roster construction, for all of the flaws that we saw out of our offense tonight, this is a time that you have to appreciate. Because let's just be honest. I've been – in Wolfpack Nation. I've been a part of Wolfpack Nation since 2013. A lot of you have been in this a lot longer than I have, immensely longer than I have. Y'all know that eight wins, or rather two-thirds of our games being wins, that has not always been the expectation here. Let's be real. Let's be honest now. Let's keep it, a as, as the kids say today, let's keep it a stack. Let's keep it a band with yourselves here. That hasn't always been the case. So let's appreciate this team showing up despite adversity despite a quarterback change, despite losing Sean Brown showing up 
as always, Johnny on the spot. After we he was our what fourth safety coming into this season? Third or fourth, yeah. Third or fourth. This is a team that you have to get behind, that you have yeah. to rally behind. Because guess what? Every Saturday, it seems like we come on here and saying, man, it, it was an ugly win. It was an ugly win. But you know what? An ugly win is still a win. Okay? A dirty $100 bill is still a $100 bill, just like one fresh from the bank. There okay? might be blood on the money, but we still count. We still count it, baby. We still <laughs> count it. I'm going to pass it back to you, Grace. Yeah, so, yes, Bar none, this is a great accomplishment to get back to another bowl season. And when when we had many doubts here just a few weeks ago that we would be able to celebrate such a thing, the, the momentum that we have now picked up following that demonstrative Duke loss, you beat Clemson at home, you beat My, Miami at home, and now you put yourself in a great position to potentially win eight games or nine games. The way that they were playing on defense – you give yourself a shot in each of these last three games that we have on the schedule here. So that is phenomenal. And we you certainly hope to keep that momentum going. There's still some there's still some meat on this bone here. The, the, the work is not done by any stretch of the imagination. No, no but it's not. Now, touching back on this offense t- tonight, um, I think you saw a little bit more of the youth from MJ Morris. I think some of the pocket presence yeah. – Still just quite isn't there, and that's okay. That's okay. This is what, his sixth start, seventh start? You have Mm -hmm. to expect that sort of inexperience to show at some point in time. And that now leads me into my next point. I didn't think I'd be finding myself talking about this after everything we saw, the beginning of the season, all the discussions that were had. You simply have to give credit to Brennan Armstrong. Absolutely. He was relevant when his number was called. That is what we've been asking for for weeks. And despite our skepticism in continuing to roll him out there, because up until tonight, it hadn't provided any dividends. Tonight it did. And tonight, I mean, you, it's it's arguably a, a major reason, in addition to the defense, that we're able to win this game. And that yeah. is nothing short of remarkable. I think that says a lot about Armstrong's character, which is going to go under the radar here. That should be talked about. He stuck around, believes in this program. He's been a great teammate from everyone that has been talked talking about it since, MJ included. And he gets thrown into this ball game, and he provides results that result in a Wolfpack win. That yeah, is worth yeah. mentioning, regardless on how you feel about it. Listen, I'm still not over the moon about the usage here, but it worked. And yeah. I will never complain if it works. So and, go ahead. And I, I want to, I want to say this real quick. I know a lot of people are going to hate me and they're going to say, Oh, you're, you're being too nice to him. I'm going to say it. I love this game from MJ. I love it. And let me tell you why. Let me tell you why he struggled early. He struggles. He struggles. He struggles. It seems like he cannot get out of his own way. It seems like the protection isn't there. It seems like he can't hit the on time on rhythm on, it seems like he can't get it. Miami is throwing cheap shots and late hits, and, and you know, it, 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 it seems like he's a little rattled out there. And a young quarterback who does not have double-digit starts under his belt, do you think he can lead a 97-yard drive at that point in time when he did? Outstanding. Outstanding. We got a, we got a big help uh, from Miami with that horse collar flag. Yeah, absolutely. We'll take that, absolutely. too. We will but take that all day. The, the pass that he hit to KC – at the end of the game, at the end of the game, on, on that 97-yard drive. That is big time. That is that is the pass. It's like uh, I remember there was a game when Kobe Bryant uh, went, I want to say it was like three for 24, three for 26, but the only three shots that he hit in that game were all in the clutch. And that's what MJ Morris just did. I'm not saying that MJ Morris is Kobe Bryant. What I'm saying is <laughs> he showed up. He struggled mightily. And I have seen this. I've seen – I I cannot tell you how many times I've seen a young quarterback start to struggle and they never recover. If you think I'm lying, look at Calandria at UVA. How many times this season have we seen him? He's balled out and then all of a sudden he starts struggling a little bit and then one pick turns into two, turns into three, turns into four. We look at MJ and we see a guy, hey, he uh, struggled. He's off target. He's not in rhythm. 
He's not hit, but he cleaned up the body language. Number one, because yes. his body language every time after every late hit, after every every incompletion, after every he's hey, we're good. We're gonna keep this thing rolling every time. And then what does he do when the game's on the line? What does he do when all the chips are against the wall? And it's hey, you get a safety here, you go win it. He goes and wins it. Kenton, you got me? Yeah, I, I got you now. I got you now. I was just saying he goes and wins it when the game is on the line. He goes and wins it. KC shows up as always. KC does what KC does. But also, we're looking for more guys. We're targeting more guys. We're targeting Timmons. We're targeting uh, Anthony Smith, who I believe drew – no, Timmons was the one who drew the uh, pass interference. But either way, we're targeting more guys. We're looking at more guys. This is, again, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you this. MJ is growing into that leader that we want to see. He's growing into that guy that's going to get us to the promised land. He's growing into it. Be patient with the young man. Be patient with the young man because this is still a very, very young guy in terms of like people take it for granted how old Devin Leary was, not only like literal age, but how experienced he was when he went on that tear that reset a lot of records in NC State history. People take for granted what we saw out of Ryan Finley and how he was in the system for years. He was here for years. He didn't just show up and day one, he just was this world beater. It took time. And he had a much better supporting cast around him. Give MJ the love. Give MJ the support because I'm telling you, as he gets better, as he gets older, he's already tweaking the minor things that are easy to tweak. Once he yeah. starts tweaking the hard to tweaks, I'm telling you, that boy is going to be one of the, at worst, at worst, if he sticks to what he's doing, sticks to his potential, stays coachable, stays humble, he will be at worst the third or fourth worst quarterback in NC State history. You can yeah. mark it down right here that we said it. Yeah, and, and you talk about his youth. I'll say this one last thing. I got to pay some bills and then we'll move on. We talked about when we made this switch over to MJ from Brennan Armstrong, and some people said, well, do you see how it goes? And possibly if it goes badly, do you bring Armstrong back in? The answer to that is no. MJ is the guy. He will be the guy moving forward. And all of the times that you do see struggle this year, stick with me, that's a good thing because he's going yes. to learn from it. His his youth and his inexperience, it is a good thing in a roundabout way. These types of games where there are some struggles, and listen, he didn't play horribly. I, th I still thought he played a pretty good game, but these are the types of games that will potentially help him the most you get those hardship times that will help him the most that will grow him into being able to attack at another level potentially next year and so on and so forth these are the types of developmental moments that mj needs to have and so yeah. that makes you a bit more excited on top of all the other promise he already has in the tank and Absolutely. so excellent effort from mj again great effort from armstrong when the offense, it is what it is. It's still a work in progress, likely will be a work in progress the remainder of this season. But in a second here, we're going to be talking about this defense because, again, they went out and they won us a ball game. An unbelievable effort to keep Miami out of the end zone. Out of the end zone tonight. Spectacular. Only time they touched it was darn warm-ups. What a shame. What a shame. Our first sponsor of this live episode is Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry about tickets when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fastest and easiest way for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. With last-minute ticket deals, all-in prices, views from your seat, and their best price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event. So if you're thinking about making the trip out to Winston-Salem next weekend, be sure to check out Game Time. They have ticket deals all the way up to the event and even an hour after it begins. It is the place to find last-minute ticket deals. And with the Game Time guarantee, you'll always get the best price. If you find tickets in the same section and row on another site for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. And again, 
Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use redeem code Locked On College. L O C K E D C O L L E G E. Locked On College for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Now, transitioning over to talking about this defense, we mentioned yeah. just a couple yeah. seconds ago. You held Miami out of the end zone for the entire night. And I mentioned this the other night or the other day uh, talking with Alex Dono of Locked on Canes. We didn't forget what Tyler Van Dyke said back in 2021. He said that he doesn't think that NC State's defense, NC State's secondary could stop him. We're checking back in two years later. How do you like us now? I, talk- Go ahead. I, I, I'm going to say this. I don't like – I'm not one of those people that gets like super emotional about these things. Like I, I try to stay as even kill as possible. If you didn't feel, if you didn't hear Peyton Wilson's words after this game and you, you weren't inspired as a member of Wolfpack nation, if you heard his words and talking about this team, because when you think, how did they stop Tyler Van Dyke? How did they stop this running game? How did they stop this offense at a higher clip than anybody else? Fourth and one. When it seems like, oh, this is the same old NC State, this is the moment where you get same old state, SOS is going to happen all over again, the NC State stuff, because I don't want to get a call from David Locke, the yes. stuff. And, and then you hear Peyton Wilson say, this is our standard. You hear Peyton Wilson say, breaking that record meant more to us than Coach Dorn. I I mean this very genuinely. I, I listen. That young man is such a leader. That young man is is such the 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 heart and soul of this defense. He's got me calling clearinghouse, seeing if I got some eligibility left. Because if he needs anything, if they need me to do anything, I mean, and and the thing is, it's easy to lead by word. It's easy to be a guy who talks a lot. He puts it on tape. He puts it on film. He is all over the place, all over the place. I mean, listen, that's that what he said right there. That's the essence of this team. That's the essence of this team. And then, like I said, it's not only about the words, it's about the action, because you got a guy who doesn't talk as much like Aiden White. And what does Aiden White do? Oh, okay. Y'all, y'all want to take the nice underneath routes against me. That's cool. That's fine. Do your thing. Have your fun. But when you get in the red zone, that ball is mine if you put it up in my direction. Yes, sir. That ball is mine if you put it up in my direction. This NC State team kept their composure against the team that did I what I thought were multiple unsportsmanlike or um, unnecessary yeah. roughness penalties. What I thought was at least a minimum of three to four. They kept their composure. They didn't go back and forth. There was only one time where I look up and I'm like, oh, my God, this is terrible. But, I mean, and, and here's 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 the thing. And, and, Peyton, if you're listening to the show, stop being so hard on yourself, brother. I saw you after you dropped that pick. I was at the game in person. I saw how Peyton reacted. We almost listen, had him on again. Listen, you'll be okay, big dog. You'll be – go get the next one and take it back to the crib. But this is – Peyton Wilson is the personification – of Wolfpack Nation. Peyton 1, Wilson really percent. is. He really is. Uh, a guy that, I mean, how many highly, how many more highly rated recruits have we had since him, or, or actually as him since the Doran era has started? How many have we had higher than him? What, four? Maybe five? And yeah, of, of those guys, right, this is a guy who has been through so much in terms of injuries, who has been told, hey, you're a known commodity, brother. Your draft stock ain't going no higher than it is today. You're a known commodity. He still comes back anyway. And does he take plays off? No. There was a point in time in the game where he was working on his right hand and his right shoulder. I'm like, hey, he needs to be off the field. Did he come off? No. He he just powered through it. He just keeps showing up. He just keeps being the self. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you. That's, 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 my, that's my captain. Nothing but respect for my captain, Mr. Wilson. Okay, that too. Love it. Love it. It's it's difficult to transition away from Peyton Wilson here because of how much he means to this team, this program, yeah. this season, this game. You can talk about him all night. Absolutely. I also want to talk about Jalen Scott. 
Oh, yeah. We've talked yeah. about Dalen Scott these last couple weeks. He's been getting better and better yes. and better, and he might have just had his best performance of the year tonight yeah. in a big spot. A dog. Jalen Scott is a dog. Really coming on at the right time here. Crucial part of the season. Huge game from Jalen Scott. Shaheen Battle. Huge game for Shaheen Battle. That fourth and one stop down there uh, in the red zone near the end of the game. Probably the play of the game if we're being put in a buck here. What a monumental shift in momentum. A spectacular stop from this defense. And that was the point I was like, I think we just won. That yeah. right there, yeah. I was like, we might have just – that might be and, the, uh, the nail in the coffin there. And, Grayson, in the post-production with me, you, and Dono, what did I say about Miami in terms of, like, their coaching ability and, and whether or not it would keep us in or out of the game? What did I say about Miami? Keep us in the game. They are idiots. Their coaches are not smart people. Like, they're not <laughs> – I don't know who told them, hey – um, their offense cannot piss a drop right now. Those boys can't do anything offensively. So fourth and one down here, instead of taking the points when points are available in a game that is in, what was it? Was it the fourth quarter or the third quarter when that happened? I want to say it was the fourth. Fourth. Okay, in the fourth quarter, 10 to 6 football game. You don't think to yourself, hey, we might not be back down here this close again, but we trust our kicker, Bo Regalis, to be good from X amount of yards. So we'll take this field goal. And then, you know, kind of suck some more momentum off and kind of get more of the momentum on our side. And then after they do that, we go ahead and kick a potential game winner. No, 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 no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, not him. Not him. What does he do? We got to go for it. I am telling you right now, this game, it didn't go exactly as I predicted to the T because I could not have predicted that our offense would have popped out with a 97-yard drive, but I knew it was going to be low scoring. I knew it was going to be ugly, and I knew that we were going to take this game due to something that their coaching staff blew horribly, which they did. Yeah, I I really don't know what Mario was seeing in his crystal ball tonight. But we thank you, brother. We thank was, you for thinking whatever it was that you were thinking. As we like to say on Tuesdays, there's a whole lot of nothing. A whole oh. <laughs> lot of nothing. A whole lot of nothing. A whole lot of whole nothing lot of in that nothing. crystal ball. So yeah. this defense, man, you it's it's almost it was almost like a complaint. Like, guys, we can't leave it up to this defense every single week. Maybe we can. Maybe we can. <laughs> I would like not to do that. But maybe yeah, we can. Yeah, because if they yeah. play that good against an offense that has the potential to be very good, maybe we can. And listen, listen to this. Our next three games, and I don't want to put the card in front of the horse here. We have Wake Forest. Their offense is not very good right now. Virginia Tech, mm, probably not as good as a Miami team. UNC, they have a good offense. You got to feel all the confidence in the world now. Again, not putting the card in front of the horse. But, but hold game. on. Hold on. It, have, have we changed our stance on any of these games? After the Duke game, did we say all of these games, you could write them off. We cannot win this game. Or did we say every game is winnable, we did but every game is losable, which is still the case. I don't believe that we can walk into Wake Forest right now and say, I know for a fact there's no way we lose this game. And I'm not going to say that. I Listen, I, I feel like I'm going to regret saying this, so maybe I shouldn't say this. I told you in August, we're going to Winston-Salem and we're beating Wake Forest. But, but wait a minute. You got Wake Forest on the road, a place that we haven't won in how long, Grayson? Too long. I'm, I'm not going to tell you the amount of years. It's been too long. So, and then we're going to Lane Stadium to play Virginia Tech, a Virginia Tech team that while they got waxed today, they have been improving steadily throughout the season. And then we have our biggest rival, the boys in baby blue, the ones that we love to hate because, you know, we know who they are, right? What do we call UNC cheaters? And what do we call cheaters? UNC. That's what the deal is here. We already know. And so, with that being said, Grayson and I aren't saying anything new. We're saying the same things that we've already told you, but we're just seeing the fruits of it come to bear, come to bear rather. We said every game going forward was winnable or losable. We have won two of the five. This does not mean, hey, no way we win lose these next three. No way. No way. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. What I'm saying is we need to come in prepare the right way, just like we did for this one. And let's go ahead and put some more teams. Make sure that we put them in a straight jacket. Don't touch our end zone. Not today. 
I you know, that's all I'm gonna say there. I love what Coach Dorn said. I believe it was on Tuesday of this week, in that he he wanted the team to felt like they lost that Clemson game. You have to keep that level of intensity. And I, I remember last year Kirby Smart and that Georgia team. He had those boys convinced that they were just not that good. The media was down on them, and everybody was like, "What are you talking about?" Everyone knows that Georgia's the best team. It's that level of almost delusion in convincing yeah. yourself to achieve yeah. greatness. Yeah. When Dave used that this week, and I think we just watched it pay dividends there in real time, Absolutely. beating Miami tonight. Keep that going because again, and we'll, I see some comments talking about our reverse psychology. Hey. You see the record next to it. Today's topics. Y'all see it. I'm not going to call too much attention to it. I think we understand what we have to do at the end of next week to keep this train rolling. But the things that we have been talking about, have are, they're, they're coming to fruition here. I said you have to make Klubnik beat you. He couldn't mm -hmm. do it. You had to make Van Dyke beat you. He couldn't do it. The yeah. defense shows up. We can play with anyone. Every game is winnable. Every game is losable. You have the you have the struggles, you have the issues that still remain when you show up and you provide effort and intensity and that belief in all four quarters, you can play with anyone. An ugly win is an ugly win is an ugly W I N. We will take yeah. every single one of them. Yeah, and also the offense taking care of the ball is pivotal, right? Even if you look at our two turnovers from the day, like yes, the fumble was a very bad, I mean. We have five offensive linemen to block a four-man rush. How we have an unblocked rusher yeah. in that scenario is a little bit mind-blowing. But things happen. Okay. The interception that MJ threw, I'd like to see that one thrown away. But I get the I, I get where he was going with it. And also, you turn the ball over, that puts them in a situation where they're backed up. I can live with that. I can live with that. You know what I mean? Like, hey, it, it is what it is. But again... If we're protecting the ball, if we're doing what we need to do and letting this defense do their thing, and we're just giving timely offense, we don't need to be USC's offense, right? Yes. We don't need to do that. I mean, hey, if you give USC's offense this defense, not only are they a playoff, they're winning the national championship yesterday. You know what I mean? Like, that's the reality. But um, that's not where we are. If ifs and buts were bears and nuts, squirrels would never starve. We live in the real world. We live in the real world of – we have what we have going on, and the reality is this team, we need more from the offense. We love more from the offense, but defense, keep standing on your head. Keep playing amazing ball. Keep coming in and preparing every single week the right way because you don't see what you saw against Clemson, and you don't see what you see today, what you saw today against uh, against Miami without that. <laughs> Hey, man. Hey, locked on after dark is listen, crazy. <laughs> listen, for those of you that might have missed it, I did begin this episode in a in hot, a hot tub. tub. It's, it's still sure behind did. me. If y'all have, y'all sure keep commenting, I, I might have to get back in it. He might have to dip a toe back in. Listen, th the point being here, this is a great win. No matter how it came, this is a great, great win. It feels yeah. so good yeah. to be six and three. Absolutely. It's excellent. You, you Again, we're going bowling. Dave hits the record. We're finding ways to win a ball game instead of lose a ball game because of that's how it went in the beginning of the season. Outstanding. I got another ad to read, and we'll close out with some final thoughts um, to close this one out here. I know it's late. Although it is daylight savings time, maybe we'll just go all night. We got a lot to celebrate. <laughs> Our second ad read of this live show is prize picks. Prize picks is simply the most fun you can have with daily fantasy sports. Now with basketball season around the corner, you can pick combo projections across football and basketball from the Specials League. This is a league created specifically for combo projections that includes two or more players from different sports or leagues. So for example, you can choose LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10 and a half combo of three pointers made and receptions. You can also play alongside some of Prize Picks' favorite players like rapper Meek Mill and comedian Andrew Scholes. You can find community plays under the Promos tab of the app to view entries from some of the biggest names in Prize Picks communities each week. Prize Picks even offers a reboot policy, so your entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return in the second, that player is rebooted. 
Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with injury insurance. And I also, I every time I read this, I can't wait to can actually use this. up to $100. I know my camera cut. I hope you can still hear me. Prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Daily fantasy sports made easy. Prize picks. All right. A couple more minutes here before we get you out of here. I know it's late. Again, another live episode with so many of you diving in here. Yeah. Talk some ball yeah. with us. We appreciate you all so very much. This has quickly become one of our favorite things to do in regards to this podcast because of you guys showing up, you're joking with us, you're being real with us, we're, we're celebrating the wins, we're licking our wounds and the losses. There's no other fan base that we would rather and sit here and do this with at almost one in the morning on a Saturday Absolutely, evening. absolutely. So and, somebody, and somebody stopped me on my way to the car um, while I left the game today. I don't know who, I, I cannot remember your name. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm not great with remembering things. 17 years of football, who knew it wasn't great for the memory? But anyway, um, <laughs> I promise you, nobody's ever an inconvenience to us. We love you all. Y'all are the reason we do what we do. Um, there, if y'all knew everything that we've gone through to keep this show rolling and all that, y'all would understand that the love that's there for Wolfpack Nation and the fact that we weren't gonna leave y'all um without without anything. But I'm gonna I'm gonna give this last thought on the game and I'm gonna keep it pushing. Much like my Lions have had to learn to win in spite of the refs, we play in ACC and we're NC State. ACC refs are bad enough as is, but especially when you're NC State, you know, I was always taught that the rule was you cannot have a second step in hitting a quarterback in terms of what is a late hit or what is it. We saw that there was literally the quarterback still had the ball in his hand when the defender was making that first step to him before the ball was going or after the ball was going rather. Um, so, you know, that was a terrible call. There were multiple holdings where it's like, all right, what's going on here? And the illegal snap penalty where Dylan McMahon just moved the ball in the same way he always does. Listen, this team has won in spite of those things. Yes. And that's what you need to see. That's what you need to see. We need to count on these things happening and say, hey, we have to be better than that. We have to beat that. The offsetting penalties and all that on the um, on the unsportsmanlike conducts toward the end of the game. You know, we knew. We knew. Like, I, I was talking to uh, the Jarvis family, who was the reason I was there. Shout out to Cam and, and uh, his pops, Wayne, you know, yo to the good noops and all that good stuff. But the reality is, in that moment, that those offsetting penalties also stopped the clock. Cost NC State 40 seconds at the end of the game. That should have went off. That 40 seconds should have went off, but it didn't. And so, you know, we won in spite of that. We picked off Van Dyke in spite of that. We did what we needed to do to win the game in spite of that. And um, in spite of players laying hands on each other after the game uh, was over and whatnot, you know, it is what it is. NC State, Rose, how about that Wolfpack? Yeah, I mean, it's. I might just have to just get back in this hot tub because it, it's it's just it's a great win, and there's really not much more you can add. Again, it's late. You got a whole lot to talk about both Monday and Tuesday as we wrap a bow on this thing. All in all, congratulations, Dave Dorn. Congratulations, NC State football. You're going bowling. You got the all-time win record for Dorn. You've beaten Clemson, and Miami in back-to-back -back games. That it in itself. That is something to behold here. Those are two big-name football programs. Again, historic, historic win for Dave Dorn. First time he's ever beaten Miami, and it comes to break the all-time program record. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. Again, say, what you're, say whatever you want to say about him, however you feel. Some of that I get it. Some of that I don't. That is a spectacular accomplishment. This is a great night to be an NC State fan, and – We'd appreciate if we have a whole lot more of these, but you feel the momentum building here. These last couple of games, you feel the momentum building. Have to roll into Winston-Salem with this momentum coming into next week. Maybe we'll make the trip. Maybe we'll have to throw a couple dollars in our uh, in the bank account, in, the, in our game time account, to get ourselves out to Winston-Salem to see it for ourselves. Maybe we will. I we'll don't know. We'll check the locked-on coffers to see what we can get done. <laughs> we'll see what we can get done there. <laughs> but... 
We appreciate you all so very much. Again, another late live stream with a ton of you guys in here with us. We're happy. We're thankful. Wolfpack win. We all win. We're celebrating. Thank you all so much for joining us. As always, toss us a like. Toss your comments in the comment box. I will get to each and every single one of those. Mash that subscribe button. We've blown past 800. We're now on the road to 900 and beyond. Thank you all so very much for the support. We will see you on Monday. NC State basketball begins on Monday. A lot to discuss there. Understand that basketball coverage is coming. We didn't we didn't give you too much after the exhibition game because it is just an exhibition game. I know some people are fired up about that. We'll talk about it on Monday. Until then, go Pack. Go Pack.